Okay, so we'll be singing a few hymns. And our first one, Great is Thy Faithfulness, O God, my Father. That's 100. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not, thy compassions they fail not. Hast thou a seen, thou forever will be. And we will sing together. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not, thy compassions they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever wilt be. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Today, so we sing the one verse and the chorus. First stanza.
Shall we stand as we sing the opening hymn? Draw me nearer, number 306. Titus 2, verse 1. But speak thou the things which become it sound doctrine. This is the word of the Lord. Shall we bow as we seek the Lord in prayer? On this beautiful Sabbath afternoon, the sacred hours of this Sabbath, we have come for this very special service. We acknowledge your presence and we pray that you will lead out in this very sacred service as members of the diaconate and elders are set aside through ordination for effective and efficient service. May you lead us, may you speak to our hearts and may we leave here with the understanding that the rent that we pay for the space we occupy here is service. So make our service Christ-centered as you lead and direct us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Thank you so much, please be seated. Good afternoon, everyone. How are you feeling today? Are you blessed? Yes. Are you sure that you are blessed? Yes. Are you feeling good in the Lord? Yes. Are you feeling happy? Yes. Well, if you're happy and you know it, let me hear you say amen. Yes. If you're feeling richly blessed and you're sure about it, won't you just wave your hands and praise the Lord? 
Indeed, that is what God's people, as God's people, we have come together to worship him, to uh, give all the love to him, to register it publicly, and to share with each other, even as we have gathered in his name. Yes, we are here for a very special and a very solemn service, even as we will witness the laying on of hands for elders, for deacons, yes, and also for deaconesses, even as the Spirit of the Lord will be poured upon them as they are set aside to do a very special work in this ministry, in the work of the gospel, in this part of the vineyard. I just want to grasp the opportunity to extend a warm and a very special welcome to all those who have come. Yes, those from the Norwood Church. Let me see your hands. Hold them up. Hold them up. Yes. Let Glendevon members say amen. amen. Indeed. And we are joining together. So those from Glendevon, won't you just hold up your hands? Let me see. Let me see. Those from Norwood, won't you say amen? Indeed, we are richly uh, blessed and I just want to take this uh, special opportunity to acknowledge the distinguished guests who we have in our midst today. Yes, I see the DPM, uh, Deputy Prime Minister of Jamaica, Minister of National Security and I believe Member of Parliament of West Central uh, St. James, West Northwest, okay, it's nor Northwest. Thank you so much. And I believe that that is the division um, that, yes, uh, <laughs> our brother to be ordained as elder, Joshua Cummins has fallen. You are the council, I believe, for the Norwood division. And so your DPM is here to show you support and solidarity even as you continue to do the work of the Lord. And so we acknowledge you along with your entourage. Um, welcome, sir. Uh, this is a good show, and we have taken note of it. And we know that the Lord himself has taken note of it as well. Just want to acknowledge uh, others, such as Pastor Joel Hay, yes, NCU Church, and of course, Administration Lecturing School of Religion and Theology, Northern uh, Caribbean University. We are very happy, and I see uh, some of the conference staff, uh, Sister uh, Curtin and, and, and Spouse, yes, from the financial and auditing services, and yes, Sister Smite James, I see you, Director of Women and Children's Ministries, and uh, James too of West Jamaica Conference, as well as I may have missed somebody, but please... Uh, forgive me, I'm not being reminded, but we welcome everybody. And if you truly feel welcome, just say amen. Amen, amen and amen. And so we thank you so much. And we therefore proceed in earnest, even as we glorify the Lord, and even as we share in this very special ordination service. May you be all richly blessed through this medium. God bless you. Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Sabbath. We also want to acknowledge the deputy mayor. That's Mr. Richard Vernon. We welcome you to this special evening. Today, as we gather to set apart men and women, brothers and sisters, for the special service of the Lord, God has chosen a servant to charge his people on this solemn day. He can be referred to as a silent giant. He craves after knowledge. He's an ardent Bible student and teacher. He's passionate about evangelism and speaks the word with vim, vigor, and in truth. He has served this district in distinction for two and a half years, from 2021 to 2023 and currently serves the West Jamaica Conference as the Ministerial Secretary. Married to the lovely Kim Dial, the union has produced one child, Jaden. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I pray, you pray, 
as I present Pastor Venkot Dar. Before he comes, we invite Sister Sasha Gay Perkins to bless our hearts in music. my strength away and through the times I could have been a casualty praise God my faith he's been there for me oh what a friend oh what a friend for me and he has turned my hope into reality praise God by faith he's been there for me there's hope in this world through him when friends have turned away when the means have grown slim, that gives us strength. Each day I'll walk alone my faith in God's sufficiency. Praise God, my faith, He's been there for me. Oh, what a friend! for me and he has turned my hope into reality praise God by faith he's been there for me and he has turned my hope into reality Amen, amen, and amen. We want to thank the Gospel Gems for that beautiful rendition. And let me say thanks to Elder Williams for presenting me to the church that I know very well by now. It's been my joy and privilege to have served here up to a few months ago. And I thank God for every opportunity I have to share here because it is a privilege from God. I want to add my own quote of welcome to our Deputy Prime Minister, Honorable Horace Chang, Minister of National Security. And uh, his entourage, as he's sitting beside him, Sir Richard Vernon, and uh, we are indeed appreciative of your presence to support our brother and friend, my friend, uh, Sir Cummings. And uh, 
all else who would have come to support family members who wanted to know that your presence is acknowledged and recognized. It is a joy to have you here worshiping with us this afternoon. It is always humbling to be in the presence of a former president of West Jamaica Conference in the house. Uh, Dr. Bowers served as president of West Jamaica Conference. It's an honor to be in his presence. And so while he's now retired, uh, we want everyone to know it's an honor to have his presence in this house. And I served right here on internship with Pastor Bowers. <laughs> So you understand when I say it's an honor to be here in his presence this afternoon. And just so you know, I also served on internship with Pastor Hay. <laughs> so it is an honor to have Pastor Hay in the house. But seated before us, we have 26 men and women being set aside for service to God. And we are indeed delighted that they avail themselves to be used by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. I invite you then to bow our heads with me as we pray. Father in heaven, we are indeed thankful for your awesome presence in our midst. We ask, Lord, that as we gather to Set aside those who have availed themselves to be used by you. That your Holy Spirit will anoint each afresh with the power of the Holy Spirit. So that they can be equipped for service. Is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to say thanks to Ella Bernard for reading this very brief but potent passage of scripture from the book of Titus chapter 2 and verse 1. In Titus 2 verse 1 it says, But speak thou the things which becometh sound doctrine. Paul, in commending to leadership the young Titus, admonished him with these nine words that he would later expand on but speak thou things which becometh sound doctrine. But the conjunction but implies that something went before. And what follows is an adverse opinion to what went on before. The thinking mind would then ask, then what went on before? And seeing you've asked, I'll tell you. For in chapter 1, Paul set us up by declaring and beginning in verse 2 of chapter 2 he says uh, this witness is true watch this now i'm starting at titus 1 verse 13 this witness is true wherefore rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith not giving heed to jewish fables and commandments of men that turn from the truth then verse 16, they profess that they know God, but in works they deny him being abominable and disobedient unto every good work reprobate. It was then he came to chapter 2 verse 1, but speak thou that which becometh sound doctrine. My dear ordinance, being set aside today, you are being called as elders and deacons and deaconesses to be leaders in the church of the living God, being set aside for service to him as Titus was set aside to serve and to lead in the church on the Greek island of Crete. See, Crete was notorious in the ancient times for immorality, for quarreling and laziness. It sounds much like some communities around us today. In the first century AD, the cult of Augustus and Roma appeared to have been practiced in Gortin, which was the, the main city on the island of Crete. 
But the cult of the deified Claudius was known to be practiced in Nossus, the second city. The cult of Aslepius, a god of healing, was confirmed in at least 18 locations on the island of Crete in the first century. The Egyptian cult of Isis and Serapis is attested to have been profound on the island also. And under Tiberius, who ruled from AD 14 to 37, Crete was used for exiles from Rome. It is believed that the Christian church was set up somewhere around Gortin, which is attested to be Crete's first ecclesiastical center. Thus, Titus, Titus was faced with a formidable challenge, both logistically and theologically, to navigate this mountainous terrain with pluralistical theological uh, ideologies. This landscape was leading the believers on the island, and so Paul admonished him, but speak thou that which becometh sound doctrine, in spite of what is around you, in spite of what you hear, in spite of what is taught uh, in the synagogues uh, and in the, the groves, whatever is being practiced on the island should not influence your way of thinking. It's simply the word of the living God. So Paul says, Timothy, you are faced with this pluralistic ideology. This, this very uh, plural thought that exists on the island of many gods. Uh, but within this context of darkness and confusion, be sound with the word. Speak thou that which becometh sound doctrine. Why, Paul? Why? Because, Paul, is, is it, Paul knew that central to Jesus' lament over Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives on the cusp of the Passion Week was a warning against deception. In Matthew 24, verse 4, it says, Take heed that no man deceive you. Verse 5, Many shall come in my name and shall deceive many. Verse 11, And many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. Many. Then again in verse 24, there shall arise false Christs and false prophets in so much that if it were possible, the very elect. So Jesus warned adamantly against false teachers. Then Paul admonished Timothy. In 2 Timothy 4, Paul says in verse 2, preach the word. Be instant, in season, and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they shall not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. So Titus... Titus, speak thou that which becometh sound doctrine. We don't have to look long, far, or wide to recognize that around us are men who are masticating the doctrines of devils, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. We don't have to look long, far, or wide to see that we are contending with a generation of vipers. Indeed, that chaos and madness is romanticized by a culture inundated with evil. That the hearts of men, like in the days of Noah, have sought to do evil continually. But in this world of madness and superstition, fear and sorrow, lying lips and unloving hearts, God is calling upon the leaders of the church to be sober, to be grave, to be temperate, to be, to be sound in faith, in charity, and in patience. God is calling upon the leaders of the church to be in behavior as becometh holiness, not false accusers, not drunkards, but teachers of good things. I said, God is calling up 
upon the leaders of the church to teach young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient, that the word of God may not be blasphemed. God is calling on the leaders of the church to exhort young men to be sober-minded. Paul continues to Timothy, he says in verse 7, In all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works. Leaders in the church of God must be of good works in the community they serve. Then, says Paul to Timothy, in doctrine, showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. In other words, Paul is saying that the leader in the church of God must be of good reputation in the community. And let me tell you, elders, deacons, deaconesses, all of you are leaders in the church of the living God. That is why God is calling on elders and leaders and deacons and deaconesses in the church to do and to be and to speak. And why? And why? Verse 11. Verse 11 of Timothy 4. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly and righteously and godly in this present world. For we know no other world but this world. This world is filled with corruption and madness. This world is filled with evil. But it's in this world God is calling you to live righteous lives. To be men and women who live holy lives. Lives above the reproach of the world. It's in this world that God is calling you to live above sin. Teaching us, it says, that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, godly, in this present world. And while you do so, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus, we have come to the last days of earth's history in which perilous times are upon us. We have come to the last days when the devil is like a prowling lion seeking whom he may devour. We have come uh, to the last days when that old serpent has released his lying spirit upon the world like he did in the mouth of Zedekiah when he opposed Micaiah the prophet of the Lord and God knows the only thing that can mitigate against the confusion in this world of sin is that leaders in the church of the living God speak that which becometh sound doctrine May you then rise above the din of the cloud of this world's darkness, knowing that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, uh, but against principalities and the powers of darkness in high places. And speak thou that which become sound doctrine. It was an ordinance. You're called to the, be committed to Jesus Christ. You must strive toward a daily commitment marked by deep spirituality and strong moral character. And you must be willing to commit your time to the work of the church and the demands that your portfolio presents. Do not for once feel, members of the diaconate, that all you are called to do is to engage in Marthaism. What is Marthaism? You remember when Jesus went to the house of Lazarus? Martha was caught up 
and fixing food and cleaning up and making sure everything was neat, but never heard a word of Jesus' sermon in the house. She was too caught up. Don't be so caught up in looking after the house of the Lord and cleaning up after the irreverent who dare to leave their garbage strewn in the house of God. Don't be too caught up caring for the needy, the widows, the orphans, the marginalized, ushering the visitors to their seats and washing up after communion. Those are all noble tasks. But in Acts 6, when the first seven members of the diaconate were chosen, the criteria were men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom. There were examples of men who stood upon sound doctrine. And how? Because they spent time in dust, said the Lord God. It is incumbent upon you, therefore, to make sure you spend time in the word of God. For only such can you fulfill that which God expects of you. It is okay and you ought to do the responsibilities of the office but you've got a responsibility for your own soul and you've got to keep your soul watered with the word of the living God. Philip was of sound doctrine when he preached to the Ethiopian eunuch and Stephen was of sound doctrine when he was stoned for his faith in Christ Jesus. We are all called to the priesthood of all believers. And we are all called to be partakers of the mission to seek and save the lost. But as leaders in the church, we must be exemplary in Christian values and standards. From the time of the Exodus, God admonished. That those who lead in the church of the living God must be ones who fear God. Men of truth, hating covetousness, says Exodus 18, 21. Then 1 Timothy 3, verse 7, Paul says, Moreover, he must have a good testimony among those who are outside, lest he fall into reproach and the sneer of the devil. Then Paul admonishes in Acts 20, verse 17 and verses 18 to 31, he says, Therefore, take heed to yourselves and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of the living God, which he purchased with his own blood. For I know this, he says, that after my departure, savage wolves shall come in among you, not sparing the flock, also from among yourselves. You know, Paul was, Paul was ripe. Also from among yourselves, men will rise up, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after themselves. Therefore, watch, he says, and remember that for three years, I did not cease to warn you day and night with Tears, Paul says, you have heard the warning. Now open your hearts to receive of him. Paul says, you must be exemplary. Then he says, you must also be an example to the members by maintaining strong family relations. Ordinance. You have to treat your family well. Hello? You must be unbiased in treating all with love, regardless of gender, color, social status, or educational acumen. You must be an exemplary steward and be willing to acknowledge you are imperfect when you make mistakes. Leaders of the church of God, as you are set aside for service, you must provide your leadership with love. Work in unity. Consult with members. Be respectful to your pastor. Enable the members and speak thou that which becometh sound doctrine. 
as I close out this homily, I want to read a passage from the church manual, page 73 to 74. It says, and the segment is captioned, relationship to the pastor. If the conference committee assigns a pastor or pastor to the congregation, the pastor or senior pastor, if more than one, should be considered the ranking officers and the local elders as assistants. Since their work is closely related, they should work together harmoniously. Amen, church? The pastor should not assume all lines of responsibility, but should share these with the elders and all the other officers. In counsel with the pastor, the elders should visit the members, should do what? The elders should minister to the sick, should do what? It says the elders should foster prayer ministries. What should they do? I don't see my elders at the front answering me. The elders should arrange or lead out in anointing services and child dedications. What should they do? Huh? The not page 76. It admonishes that elders should cooperate with the conference in that they should promote all the programs and activities of the church and encourage all officers to support conference plans and policies. Hello? This tells me that if you are an anti-conference, an anti-organization leader, then you ought not to be seated where you're sitting, being set aside. I hope I was clear with that. Because we are one church. We are one church, one worldwide Seventh-day Adventist church. This tells me, therefore, that if you are one who is set on sowing seeds of discord in the organization, feeling you have a right to disrespect the authority of the pastor that is assigned to your church and thinking you are law unto yourself, it will do you well to not walk up to this platform when the moment comes for the act of ordination as you would be acting contrary to the will of God. But as servants of God, we are called to be true and faithful to him. We are called to be of clear consciences. We are called to live in an abiding and saving relationship with God Almighty. We are called to be one with him. We are called to speak for him, to lead in him, and to speak that which becomes sound doctrine. So you are called to be leaders for him. Today you are being set aside because these churches here represented desires to affirm the evidence of the gift of God in you and to set you aside for service to the king. I commend you therefore for the service you have rendered. But never for once think that what is happening here today is a graduation service. It is not a graduation service. You have not completed a course of work and so you're being given a reward for your service. No. What's happening here today is that you are being affirmed to serve in all the fullness of the role you've been occupying so far. The church have observed you and have seen that God has laid his hand on you and desire to set you aside for continued service. I trust then that as we gather here for this solemn moment, you will recognize the call that God has placed on your life and you will arise to do that which God appoints you to do to the best of your ability, to the honor and glory of God Almighty, to the service of your fellow men. And so at this time, we're going to thank God 
for his leadership in our lives so far. And I trust that as God set you aside, and as we affirm that call, you will remember to be faithful in speaking that which becometh sound doctrine. This time we'll invite the Norwood group to share with us special musical rendition, after which we will have the introductory profiles of the elders being ordained this afternoon. Welcome, Ms. Sasha Gale Perkins. Good afternoon, everyone. I hope we all took something for ourselves from our dear pastor, Venkat's uh, sermon, and we hope to carry along with us through that week goes along.
give you a brief profile of the elders who will be ordained. And so as we call your name, we ask you to stand and you will remain standing even after the profile has been completed. And so the first person who we will give that profile for is Sister Laura Headley. Sister Headley is married and her husband Damien is also here, Damien Headley is also here giving his support to the decision that she has made. She is the mother of two children, a beaming young man and also a young lady who have decided to hold on to the hands of the Lord. Sister Headley's favorite Bible text is Psalm 91. And just to give you a little picture of why she loves this text, in verse 1 it says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And so she declares that the Lord is her shield and her butler. She had held and is currently holding several positions in the church. She held the position or the office of Sabbath school superintendent, Sabbath school secretary. She was the director for the New Believers Choir and she also held the capacity of leader of the youth women's ministry. She is currently our church clerk. She's also a deaconess and she is a part of the press team and also works as a husher. She has been in the church from 2004 and hence it speaks to her dedication to the Lord and the service in the church. Sister Laura Headley also in her secular work she is an administrator at the Cornwall Regional Hospital. Help me in giving Sister Headley a round of applause for the decision she has taken. Next we have Taisha James. Taisha James is single, hoping to find a nice husband this year. She holds the office of AY leader, I will go coordinator, assistant prior ministry coordinator. Her favorite scripture, Romans 8, 28. She has been in the church since 2011. She has a Bachelor of Science in Sociology. She is presently a teacher, and she also is a member of the Mass Choir. Next person to be ordained is Elder Farley Artwell. Elder Artwell is married to Avril. He has five children. Two is now deceased. His favorite text is Romans 12, verse 1. And it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, unto God, which is your reasonable service. And Brother Artwell has given much service to the work of the Lord. 
he held the office of personal ministry director for some time. He currently serves as a deacon, I, the prior band coordinator, the shut-in sponsor, the funeral coordinator. He is a Bible worker and he's also a Sabbath school teacher. Brother Artwell has been in the church since 1996 and he intends to stay there until the Lord takes him home. He currently works as a carpenter and believe you, he really serves in that area for those who need his help. Help me to... Next we have Brother Martin Williams. Brother Martin Williams is married. His wife, Camille, Carmelita, Carmelita, oh, Carmelita Williams is also here to support him. Together they have three children, two boys and one girl. Office held by Brother Martin, deacon, stewardship director, choir member, prayer band member. His favorite scripture is Psalms 51. Brother Martin has been in the church since 1983. His profession, electrician. Let us welcome Brother Martin. Thank you very much. We are here to acknowledge the deacons and the deaconesses. I'll be starting with the deacons, and Sister Doyle will be doing the deaconesses. So as I call the deacons, you'll stand and acknowledge the congregation, and then you can sit after you have been acknowledged. Okay, the first one on the list is Brother Colin Daly from the Glendevon Sunday Adventist Church. Next is Brother Natonio Smith, also from the Glendevon Church. And thirdly is Brother Garfield Sterling, also of the Glendevon Church. Next we have Brother Joshua Cummings from the Norwood Church. And final. Brother Selvin Tingling from the Norwood Church. We now move to the deaconesses. Sister Patricia Bell from the Glendevon Church. Sister Karen Bernard, Glendevon Church. Sister Nicola Dunn, Glendevon Church. Sister Joan Carr, Glen Devon Church. Sister Karen Grant, Glen Devon Church. Sister Camella Grant, sorry, Sister Camella Carr, Glen Devon Church. Sister Mona Lisa McFarlane, Glen Devon Church. Sister Vilma Miller, Glen Devon Church. And Sister Vinnell Spence, Glen Devon Church. Also, Sister Valerie Clark of the Glen Devon Church. Sister Nadisha Dias, Norwood Church. Sister Sharon Dobson, Norwood Church. Sister Elsa Jackson, Norwood Church. Sister Delcine Mills, Norwood Church. Sister Gloria Norman, Norwood Church. 
finally, Sister Cheryl Tingling, Norwood Church. Thank you so very much. stand and so we'll be going to the litany that is in your program at this time okay I Hope we can get the litany on the screen also. Is it possible? Oh, it's up there. Thank you. And so as we get to the litany, we are going to be... I'm going to begin. The ordinance will go next. Then Pastor Bowers will go. And we will alternate like that to the end. All right? And so... I will begin. To the worship of God and the work of the church. To the fulfillment of our various duties under the guidance of the Holy Spirit and the edification and leadership of the young and old. To set a right example at all times in our homes at our work and before all with whom we come in contact. To a deeper appreciation of the sacredness of the Sabbath hours and the rich spiritual blessings in store for all who call the Sabbath a delight, holy of the Lord, honorable, and shall honor him, not doing our own ways, nor finding our own pleasure, now, speaking our own words, we consecrate ourselves to guard our lives against spiritual declension and moral degeneracy that exist in these days of peril foretold in Scripture, and to stand in the purity and integrity of our high and holy responsibilities as ordained officers of the church. We dedicate ourselves to the work of the Master, to the teaching of the gospel, to the ministry of prayer, and to the leadership of God's people, we acknowledge their call. But the congregation should have read that one. Together. And together we'll all read. We recognize that the objectives of this church is to prepare both young and old for translation into the kingdom and into the presence of a pure and holy God. We further recognize that this calls for a deeper spiritual awareness, consecration, and dedication. We hereby renew our vows to God sincerely and joyfully. Let us honor Amen. And so at this time, invite the congregation to join us in standing as we will sing together baptize us anew while the elders to be ordained will be escorted to the platform by other ordained elders here present so we're joining singing baptize us anew with power from on high and ordained elders will join in escorting the ordinees to the platform. And then after the ordinees are on the platform, we'll ask and invite all the other ordained elders present to join us on the platform for this special dedicator prayer. All right.
Baptize us anew with pour from on high with love all refresh us all of our heads with me now as we pray. Holy Father in heaven, we recognize the solemnity of this moment where your sons and daughters are availing themselves to be used by you. As we join in kneeling this moment, we ask, Lord, that we remove sins far from us. May you cleanse us and purify us. Make us worthy to come into your presence. May you touch our lips and our hearts. Like you did, David, create clean hearts within us and a new right spirit within us. And Lord, at this time we present to you these four individuals, Brother Farley Artwell, Sir Tayasha James, Sir Laura Headley, Brother Martin. We ask, oh God, that this moment in time, you will rest your hand upon your children. As we acknowledge your call upon their lives to serve in the office of an elder in the local church, we ask God that we'll equip them for this service, that you will allow your Holy Spirit to consecrate them anew. Fall afresh, O Holy Spirit on the lives of your children. Set them aside in such a way that all will rise up and call them blessed because your spirit emanates from them. May as they serve in their community, men and women will see that indeed these are men and women of Almighty God. May the words they speak 
be words of sound doctrine. We ask God that your hearts will be set upon doing that which is right in your sight. That the leadership they provide will be characterized by righteousness, justice, and mercy. We ask, Father, that your hand of blessing will be seen and evident in their lives. That the members they serve will recognize the call in them. That you will grant them authority so as they speak your words, it will come forth with authority. Bless them with authority over evil spirits, over diseases, so when they gather to anoint, their sick healing will follow. We ask, O oh God, that these, your sons and daughters, will be granted the gifts necessary for the promulgation of the gospel, for the work of evangelism, for the leadership of your people, and for the furtherance of the mission. May you awaken within their hearts the desire to seek and to save the lost as together they work for the furtherance of the mission. And so, Lord, as we lay our hands upon them now, not because we feel we are conferring any special virtue, but by your divine command, we lay our hands upon them and ask that you will indeed lay your hands upon them. Oh, yes, oh God, may our hands represent yours as you lay upon them the charge to go forth as co-laborers in the vineyard. We pray, God, that your spirit will be so impressed upon their hearts that it will allow the service they bring to be one that is evident of your presence. Lord, if there be any wicked ways in any, may it be far removed from your children. If there be any sin in any, may it be far removed from your children. Oh God, may you allow that these, your children, will be so filled with your presence that all that they put their hands to do will be marked with your blessing. So as we affirm your calling them, may you set them aside for service to your church and may they rise to the occasion that you have called them to for we ask it all in Jesus name amen, amen. amen. and amen Elders, it is my privilege to extend to you commendation and congratulations for this important responsibility that you have accepted. It has been executed through the, ch through the church, but remember, it is a call from God. I hope and pray that you will serve with love, with humility. You will serve not with high service as men pleasers, but as servants of Christ, doing God's will from your hearts. And may you serve so well that at last it will be a joy to hear the glad well done from the lips of the Savior our master Jesus Christ as you enter the new Jerusalem to spend eternity with him congratulations and God bless you that you will serve with distinction to extend welcome to the four newly ordained elders 
I commend you into the capable hands of Almighty God. Keep your eyes and your hearts fixed on him. And with him in the lead, you will succeed. God bless you. Amen. Amen. And so, brothers and sisters, we have some certificates prepared by the West Jamaica Conference. I will read one for you. All of them follow the same format, and so they will read just the same. It says, Seventh-day Adventist Church, West Jamaica Conference, Certificate of Ordination. This certifies that Farley Artwell of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, Norwood, was ordained to the office of elder and is duly authorized to perform all the sacred duties connected to this office according to the principles and doctrines of the organized Seventh-day Adventist Church, consecrated to the said office on February 24, 2024, signed by the President, the Ministerial Secretary, and the Church Pastor. Thank you so much. And so, at this time, we are going to be having the consecrator prayer for all our deacons and deaconesses. I'm going to ask the elders on the platform to please step back at this time so we can have the deacons and deaconesses coming forward, and then uh, we will encircle them as best as possible. And so now, our newly ordained elders have their first order of duty to share in this ordination service for deacons and deaconesses. Amen? Amen. So I want to invite at this time the deacons and deaconesses to be ordained to come forward. Let us pray, church. Our God and our Father, 
we come to you again today in the precious name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord and Master and soon coming King, who way back then voluntarily gave up the glories of heaven, came to earth, lived the life of one of the lowest, and then paid the price for our salvation, making that amazing, unfathomable sacrifice so that the gates of heaven have been opened to us. We thank you for this precious gift of salvation. Nothing on earth can be compared. We thank you for your church that you have established as the agency through which the message of salvation is carried to the whole world. It is a privilege, it is an honor for us to serve in your church. And we want to thank you this afternoon for these men and women that have accepted the call to serve in your church. It's a privilege, Lord, and we ask you to help them to do it with pleasure because your work can be executed without us. We need you, but you don't need us. So, Father, I ask you now to let your Holy Spirit rest upon them. Give them grace to serve for the honor and glory of your name. Take away from them all selfish motives and interest, and may they be consumed with love and devotion for Christ. Amen. Consecrate them to your service. Help them to live lives that will bring honor and glory to your name Amen. and blessing to the church and to the wider community. Oh, Father, I'm asking you to, be good, to help them to be good examples in their homes in the co communities where they live, in the church. Let none of them allow the devil to drag them down so that they will bring a reproach upon your high and holy name. Help them to be light bearers. We have come to a time of gross darkness as the sure word of prophecy has outlined. And the darkness is getting thicker. And we need, you need light to help to dissipate the darkness. Amen. As they serve, Lord, help them to appreciate, to acknowledge that the service they give is not restricted to the menial tasks that are in the church. Help them to remember the examples of two of the first seven deacons. Stephen and Philip. They were filled with your Holy Spirit and they preached the gospel effectively, efficiently, that as a result of their life and work, your church was strengthened. Give them supreme love in their hearts for you and help them to love their fellow men. Amen. Oh, Father, as we lay our hands upon them now, we ask that you will baptize them anew with power from on high. Amen. Let love be the motivating factor in their lives and help them to serve so well that at last, they and their spouses and their children will have the joy of hearing the glad well done from your lips and then to have the greater privilege, the wider joy entering the new Jerusalem 
spending eternity with you. Grant that the churches where they serve will be very supportive of their work, will help to hold up their hands, and may all of us at last spend eternity with you. To this end, we ask that heaven's benediction will now rest, remain, up, and abide upon them, both now and forevermore, and all God's children say, Amen, amen. and Amen. say to the newly ordained members of the Darkonet that when your mama and papa met and coitus took place it was half a billion sperm cells that were released competition between 500 million but God chose you God chose you God chose you to fulfill his purpose. This is a step in the right direction to be set aside by God because he has chosen you. Look to him as the leaf turns itself up to receive fresh dew so that it may grow and develop. And be confident that once you look to him, you will fulfill that purpose. God bless you. Just to read what the certificate says for the deacons and also for the deaconesses. It reads very similar to the elders. It says, Seventh day Adventist Church, West Jamaica Conference, certificate of ordination. This certifies that Colin Daly of the Seventh day Adventist Church, Glenn Devon, was ordained to the office of deacon and is duly authorized to perform all the sacred duties connected to this office according to the principles and doctrines of the organized Seventh day Adventist Church. Consecrated to the said office on January 20. February 24, 2024. Signed by the President, Minister, Secretary, and the Church Pastor. So I will be calling the names, and then you can come and receive your certificate. You will shake Pastor his hand, and you'll collect your certificate from Pastor Bowers. All right, so uh, we'll start with... Colin Daly. Uh, Antonio Smith. Garfield Sterling. Joshua Cummings. Selvin Tingling. Both brother and sister Tingling are being ordained today. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And so those are the deacons we have being ordained today. Now we go to our deaconesses. 
And so we start with Miss Patricia Bell. Karen Bernard. Sister Nicola Dunn. Sister Karen Grant. Sister Joan Carr. Sister Camilla Carr. Sister Mona Lisa McFarlane. Sister Vilma Miller. Sister Vinel Spence. Sister Valerie Clark. Sister Nadisha Dias. Sister Sharon Dobson. Sister Elsa Jackson. Sister Delcy in Mills. Sister Gloria Norman. And Sister Cheryl Tingling. truly want to, well, truly want to commend you for the service you have been rendering to your church, to congratulate you on this wonderful occasion of being set aside for service. Again, it's not an award for good work. It is an approval that God has indeed laid his hand on you, and the church have acknowledged that call and the hand of God in your life. Keep faithful, and you shall indeed be a crown of life one day. So at this time, we will be allowing the elders present to congratulate them. And uh, we'll invite our special guests to come and congratulate them also. And 
any other ordained elders in the congregation invited to come. And a worker from the conference, come Sister Curtin. Come and congratulate the brethren who are here.
Yes, one of applause for them. That's all right. That's all right. Amen. Amen. And so, at this time, we are going to be having one of our newly ordained elders to give a response on behalf of the elders. And this will be laid upon Elder Taisha James will be giving a response on behalf of the elders. My big daughter. Yes, yeah, she's my big daughter. Those of you who didn't know, yes. My big daughter. Then after she has spoken, we'll have Sister Dawn to give a response on behalf of the deaconesses and Brother Cummings to give a response on behalf of the deacons. All right? Thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. On behalf of the elders here ordained today, I express heartfelt thank you to all of you for joining us for this very special and solemn service. Thank you for your commitment to us, your partnership and cooperation, and now we crave it even more. Let's go for more in 2024. on behalf of the deaconesses ordained here this afternoon we want to say thank you again for your support and we avail ourselves to serve you and the master uh, for the year 2024 God is good and all the time wonderful on behalf of the Deacons, I just want to say to you all that we know the work has just begun and we are willing and ready to work and do the work of the Lord. God bless you and thank you very much for turning out this afternoon in the way you turned out and supported us. One love, God bless. Thank you. Thank you so much. And so at this time we'll be having a musical item and then we will be closing out this evening. And I want to join Brother Cummings in saying thank you to everyone who have come out this evening and have joined to support and to show your affirmation of those who are set aside for service this afternoon. Thank you so very much. All right? So we're going to have a musical item at this time uh, before we go to the, the closing. of rain that falls, a flower grows. I believe that somewhere in the darkest night, a candle glows. I believe for everyone who goes astray, someone will come.
smallest bird will still be heard. I believe that someone in the great somewhere hears every indeed and we do believe and we are bringing that which we believe was a meaningful and impacting service to a close but just before we do that there are three vehicles which we understand are causing some obstruction what I have is 6840 LA so if you are the driver of that vehicle please report right now then we have 65 one seven KU that's causing some challenges and seven seven nine zero JU please uh, report to your vehicles immediately the pathfinders from Glen Devon are reminded that's those from a fell pathfinder club you are reminded that you need a turnout for club tomorrow morning it will be preparation for the induction service and it's very important that you are there and so one final public notice which uh, must be uh, registered today notice has this day been received by me of marriage as intended to be solemnized between the following persons namely that's Clifford De Peart. he is a bachelor he is a banker by calling and he is from success Hanova and we have Sasha Gay Silk she is a spinster her calling she's also a banker and she now resides at Charlton Kingston 8 and so all objections to a certificate of due publication of bands granted authorizing the celebration of this marriage shall be lodged with me in writing within seven clear days from this date by the objector who must appear personally to declare the truth thereof and the date of course is february 24 uh, 2024 and the marriage officer is pastor james sonlin let's bear that in mind i invite us to stand at this time even as we close with prayer let us pray O oh, gracious loving god and our father we thank you for what was achieved today we believe that your holy spirit uh, was conferred was uh, poured out uh, upon those who were ordained as elders and deacons and deaconesses may you continue to baptize them and to use them effectively in your service may we continue to give them the support necessary so that they may bring great glory to your name bless the membership at large bless even our visitors our public officials who have come in and uh, uh, our workers from the conference and everyone who made this occasion what it was and even oh God as we have come together for this ordination service may every one of us by virtue of our commitment to you be a part of that great celebration when we will meet on the sea of glass in glory bless us to this end take us home safely now for we ask these mercies in the mighty wonderful and the powerful name of Jesus and let the church of God say amen, amen. And amen you may be seated we thank you so so much I think some of the photographers 
are interested in getting some uh, pictures, how we will navigate that. I'm not sure. But also, the congregants would love to shake your hands, elders. And so we are asking, Elder Bernard, if you could just lead them uh, to the front of the church where they will stand in line and the congregation may receive.